Outrunning, outmaneuvering, and outwitting your pursuers is the name of the game for couriers of the Emerald Chain. This ship epitomizes the pursuit of those tactics perhaps better than any other in the courier's ragtag fleets. Improvements to artificial gravity alongside high-capacity inertial dampers allow this ship to confuse enemy sensors with its constant spiraling motions without risking damage to any cargo it is hauling. Couriers unable to avoid a confrontation are known to use crowded areas of space to their advantage, such as debris fields, asteroid clusters, or traffic choke trade lines, where this ship's ability to zigzag through those tight quarters is sure to give it the advantage. This is the Courier Pilot Raider. Endeavor Gaming, and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new lockbox ship, seeing what it can do, and checking out that very interesting console. So, let's just go on ahead and get into it. Here we are, back in Star Trek Online, and we have the brand new Courier Pilot Raider. I have this one, the USS Nova. We're going to be taking a look at the build, trying it out in a couple of patrols, and seeing how it does. So, first, I am using a slightly modified version of my Viridian Plasma Cannon Scatter Volley build. It's nothing too fancy, most of the stuff is pretty standard, I've gone over this in a couple of streams, but let's go through all of the equipment real quick just to get it out of the way. So first, up in the four weapons we have the Ultimate Modified Kelvin Torpedo, obviously we're using it with that full three piece that we'll get into a little bit later. We have the Wide Arc Viridian Plasma Dual Heavy Cannons, and then we have three Viridian Plasma Dual Heavy Cannons. So, I really don't need these wide arcs, but at the moment I actually don't have a fourth one, and this is fine. This definitely has a turn rate to where I don't really need the wide arc ones, so in the future, if you guys wanted to go with just, you know, four of the normal ones, that would probably be fine. For our deflector, we're running one of our standard fleet deflectors. We have coal crate, control expertise, hull cap, control expertise times two, and EPS. For our impulse engines, again, unsurprisingly, we're using the competitive engines getting that speed boost on our firing modes. Got a standard fleet uh, warp core here. You know, we have efficiency, we've got weapons to engines, weapons to shield, and our weapons cap. For our shields, we're using the Revolutionary Covariant Shield Array. This one's kind of a toss-up. There's a lot of different shields you can use. I'm really just using it for that extra little tiny boost of directed energy weapon damage, but there's plenty of other ones you could use too. For our rear weapon, we have the Ultimate Omni. This again, going into that 3P set, and once we get to the last console, we'll go over what that set does and why I'm using it. And for the experimental weapon, we're using the rotor rocket. So from what I've seen, this still isn't going to outperform Salt on Wave Impeller as an experimental weapon, but it's a lot of fun and looks great, so I'm keeping it on for this video. I might change it if I go hard into DPSing with this ship, but we'll see. Moving on to our consoles. Universal, can't go wrong, Lorca's custom fire controls, comes from the reputation, great booster crit chance, as well as your shield penetration. More of my shield penetration comes from this console than basically anything else on the ship. I always recommend picking it up, there are very few builds where it's not useful. For our engineering consoles, we went with things that were going to help our crits, 
Byron Earl Infusion Zerk, that's a great one. Gives you a nice boost to your crit severity, plus a nice little boost to hull integrity as well. Next we have the interface of Griff Generator. You could potentially throw on something like Weaponized Helical Torsion on here if you're running Phaser. I went with this one because I didn't need that Phaser boost, and again, hull capacity is kind of useful. This ship was a bit squishy when I was flying it the first time, so any little bit helps. For our science consoles, we've got DPRM. Again, this is a console I'll always come back to. There basically isn't a single build I wouldn't use this console on. We have Immolating Phaser Lance, we're going to be using that to proc off Universal Designs, get our crits even higher. We have Temporal Trajectory Shifter, this is basically just for that weapon firing cycle haste. It's, again, something that's going to speed up our weapons, and you'll see a lot of that on this ship as well as all of my Radiant Plasma Cannon Scatter Volley builds. And then we have Domino. So I know the passives for this are for phaser damage, but that clicky is just oh so very useful. 25% bonus damage, as well as another boost to our haste. You can't go wrong. Moving on to our tactical consoles, we have the last piece of that three-piece set. That is the Ultimate Modified Swarm Processor. So we're going to go ahead and check out that three-piece set, which is, surprise, surprise, 100% firing cycle haste for energy weapons when you are using its now active ability here. Always nice. Next, we have the console off of this ship, Debris Screen. Now, I'm definitely still skeptical about this console. I've seen it work really well, and I've seen it work not so well. We're going to use it. I'm still not entirely sure what buffs this damage-wise, but I will say that that number saying it could potentially do up to 63k damage is definitely lowballing it. I've had a 2 million hit with this console, so we're going to have to keep experimenting to see where the upper levels of this really go. And then lastly, we're ending out with our vulnerability exploiters. Obviously, these are all for plasma damage, they're great, and you can also use the crit chance consoles. The only reason I didn't is because I'm running at a crit chance of 41.4 and that tends to go up even higher in combat. So for now I'm just sort of balancing it out. Moving on to traits, we've definitely got some interesting ones though, not overly surprising ones. Good day to die. Again, always a great one. Adaptive Offense, Context is for Kings, Fleet Coordinator, Fragment of AI Tech, Intelligence Agent Attaché, Terran Targeting Systems, and then Unconventional Systems. Unconventional Systems is a great one, and we'll get into why this one is going to work so well a little bit later when we get to our Bridge Officer Assignments. Next, we have Superior Cannon Training, and then lastly, the Boimler Effect. There's basically not a single ship I wouldn't use Boimler Effect on. It's, it's so great. Next, we've got our Starship traits here. So, we've got Terran Goodbye. Again, building up those crits is always awesome. Emergency Weapon Cycle. We've got Emergency Power to Weapons. We'll get into that when we get into our Bridge Officer Assignments. Withering Barrage to keep up that Scatter Volley as much as possible. Universal Designs, again, for those crits. We have Rabbit Emitting Armaments, because I am just becoming a huge fan of this trait. My friend Orsonic is somebody who absolutely loves this trait. He's basically the one who talked me into getting that bundle in the first place, and I've had nothing but fun with this. And then lastly, we have supercharged weapons. Again, we're going to have a torpedo spread over on our bridge officer assignments, so any extra crits are always appreciated. For our bridge officers, we've got ample amounts of seating. I really enjoy the seating on this ship. It, it gives you a lot of options. We've got an engineer here with Let It Go, Emit Unstable, Warp Bubble, and Emergency Power to Weapons 3. So these two I'm using because they're going to proc off unconventional systems. Same with Tractor Beam as well as Gravity Wall, and I believe Scramble Sensors does as well. For our Miracle Worker, unsurprisingly, we have Never Sense Brands 1 and Mixed Arm and Synergy 1. We've got that Torpedo, we've got a Beam Bank, and we've got Cannons. So hopefully everything works out well. We've got Chemocide, because if there's Torps, Chemocide isn't far behind. And then lastly, for our big command seat, we're not using any pilot abilities, because there's really not a whole lot I need to use or want to use. So we've got a Cannon Scatter Volley 3, Torpedo Spread 3, Attack Pattern Beta, and a Beam Fire at will. Let's also take a quick look at our duty officers here. Nothing on here is too, too special, for one, I'm going to replace this guy since I was finally able to get a purple version of the Projectile Weapons Officer. So, starting out with him, we have the Projectile Weapons Officer, a chance to gain crit severity on firing projectiles, which can stack up to three times. With the Torpedo Spread that we'll get to, it's an absolutely fantastic duty officer to have. 
Next, we have our three Borg duty officers. This one is Science Pilot for accuracy and exotic damage. We have 29, which is power levels to maximum and exotic damage for our Miracle Worker abilities. And then lastly, we have Tac Miracle Worker, which is power levels to max and critical chance. So you could throw a lot of different Borg duty officers in the slots. There are probably better ones, but these are the ones I had on hand. So they're the ones that are going on the ship. Next, we have Vincent Kish. This is really just going to be for our beam fire at will if we wanted to go to two. You could very easily switch this out for one of the other, uh, you know, weapons experts here, like the one that gives you damage against Borg specifically, or just about any of them. And then lastly, filling out this last one, I actually don't know why we're running this here. We have one for auxiliary power to the structural integrity field. That's definitely not a super great one to be using. I would say having something like a projectile weapons officer or anything that potentially offers you crits would be a much better thing to throw on here. So that's basically the build. It's promising, but the only way to know for sure is by bringing it into a test. So let's take it into some patrols and see how it does.
that you get underway. The case of we have the suspect. So, as we saw, the courier pilot raider had absolutely no problems getting through that patrol. It did take a little bit longer than I was expecting. It probably comes down a lot to piloting. I'm definitely not the best pilot when it comes to, you know, fast moving raiders and ships with pilot specialization. I definitely focus more on cruisers and at the smallest escorts, but overall I'm having a ton of fun with this ship. Why don't we throw it into something a little more dicey and something that could really test out its survivability and a prolonged engagement. One less rip to work. Let's reboot the market. Bad news, I'm afraid. Klingons are approaching our position. <laughs>
So as you saw, things definitely got a little bit more dicey in that patrol. When I sat there and tried to fly like an escort, this ship immediately got melted into oblivion. And that's probably because it's only running at 67,500 hit points. This is definitely not a tanky ship. Which brings me to who this ship is made for. It shines as a raider. It's a lot of fun to use. It's a lot of fun to fly. I personally don't fly a whole lot of raiders. And I'm not very good at it because I don't fly them all that much. But for the people who really enjoyed ships like Spock's Jelly Ship, Jellyfish, the uh, Vulcan Experimental Science Vessel, and wanted something that was much more directed energy weapons oriented, this, this is the ship for you. It's going to be fun, it's got some great seating, the console is potentially going to be a whole lot of fun, and what can I say, I enjoy it. For damage output, I definitely rank it around a 7 out of 10. It's, it's fine, it's definitely up there, you know, you throw a good build on it, it'll perform well. But it's not going to be one of the best performers in the game, not by a long shot. And as far as survivability, I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10. Again. If you can leverage the pilot maneuvers giving you that immunity, you can probably survive a whole lot better than I did in this patrol that we did do on Elite. And obviously, in an advanced TFO, it'll probably never be a problem anyway. But that 67,000 hull points is definitely going to hurt in the survivability. Plus, it definitely won't have the same resist as a cruiser will. None of mine are even breaking 35% here. So if it takes too many hits or it gets surrounded, you're going to have a bad time if you don't have a pilot maneuver up to get you out of it. What are your thoughts on the brand new Courier Pilot Raider? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, consider hitting that subscribe button and checking out all of the other videos on the channel. Well, that's all I got for the day, everyone. Have a great day, and as always, remember to keep calm and game on.